guys to, you know, share and tag and all that good stuff. Hello and welcome. Hello, come on in the room. Dr. S here with our very exciting expert panel here. We are about to talk about church culture. So while we're giving people time to come on, feel free to tag a friend, share. We would love to hear from you. You all can, Sierra, Tabitha, Derek can invite your friends as they're letting people pop on. Awesome. Super excited. I feel like I should have music playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. So we are getting ready to talk about, so this is church cultural panel discussion. This is our third month of doing this. I'm so excited. So we will go ahead and get started. So mm -hmm. as you all know, Dr. S here, thank you for coming, coming back, joining in on our discussions. As I mentioned, please, please, please share this live, tag a friend, um, because we really want this to be interactive and engaging, and you don't want to miss this conversation. So tonight, I have my great friend, Sierra Narita, back joining us. We have some new faces here. We also have um, Tabitha Bennett and Derek Sims. Um, on the flyer, we had Pastor Cherry Teal was going to pop on as well, but she had some things come up and she wasn't able to join the live, but she said she might pop in the, com the comments. So maybe we'll still be able to hear from her. But before we get into the conversation, I want to give um, everybody just a brief little moment to introduce themselves. So Tabitha, would you like to start? Sure. Um, hey, everybody. Um, as she said, I am Tabitha. I'm currently uh, working on my doctorate in traumatology. Originally, it was pastoral uh, studies, um, but I feel such a strong calling to, you know, I've been in church. I, I know you wanted me to say this. I've been in church all of my life. Uh, my parents pastor. So as they say, Q baby, that is me. Um, and my parents are really big in education. I am the first in my family. And I would put it this way. No one thought I would ever get to this point, but I'm the first in my family to um, go after a doctorate degree. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, in my intermediate family. And then uh, I am working on a nonprofit organization called Hope Determined. We are uh, basically case management as um, that will work in focusing on Christian mental health. So anybody that's looking for a Christian therapist, you can reach out to me. I have people that I can connect you to. Um, that is something that I'm very passionate about, um, just helping be an answer to the mental health crisis that is actually going on within our four walls, um, the, the church body. So, hello, I'm excited to be on. Can't wait to have a conversation. I'm excited, y'all. Thank you, Tabitha. Brother Derek, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, I'd love to. Hey, everybody, my name is Derek Sims. I'm the former pastor and founder of uh, uh, Prayer and Worship Temple of Christ. I'm one of the, I was, I was one of the uh, pastors at the Liberation Church here in uh, Greensboro. I am a chef and an AFLAC uh, sales agent. Former pastor. Um, and I am so, so happy to be here today. I have been in church all my life. It seems like I've been in every church all my <laughs> life. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, every church. I'm, I'm like what they say about dogs. I'm a church mutt. <laughs> I got a little bit of everything. So, <laughs> so I'm just very, very happy to be here and I look forward to this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. We're glad to have you. And Sierra. Uh, so 
Hello again, everybody. I am Sierra Narita. Um, I grew up in church. Um, I've been in church my entire life. Uh, not always on straight and narrow necessarily, mm -hmm. but I've been there with at least one foot in the door. Um, <laughs> I am the creator in, of a podcast called Kicking Conversations. I am, I would call myself like a self-proclaimed relationship, a lover of relationships. So on the podcast, that's kind of what we talk about relationships in all kind of facets, self, God, you know, romantic, money, all types of relationships though. That's me. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to have all of you here. Um, who knows, Sister Anita Hayes, who also has been um, a very dynamic presence, might pop on. We never know, but I am just super excited to get started. So as I mentioned, this is our third panel discussion. So thus far, we've talked about what is church culture? Like, is it even a thing? And we've determined that, yes, it definitely is a thing. We talked a little bit about church hurt, what that looks like, how we can kind of get over those types of things. We also last month talked a little bit about biblical standards or biblical principles versus man-made standards. And we talked about some absolutes as far as there are some foundational things you can't get around. You definitely have to do those things within the body of Christ versus some things that maybe, you know, somebody somewhere has said one time and we've made them gospel, but they're not necessarily gospel. So it is our aim to talk about those topics that don't seem to get discussed as much in the body of Christ. So tonight is no different. Tonight we are talking about the concept of wise counsel versus controlling leadership. Now, I know for some that's, that's a big thing. Like some people are gonna be like, yes, 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 wise counsel. Some people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, that's why I don't go to church now because it's so controlling. So I look forward to what everyone has to say. Any comments that you guys have, we really, really want to hear from you all. So let's get started. So the first question I have to my distinguished panelists is, how do you define wise counsel? Who would like to take a stab at it first? Um, I guess I'll start. <laughs> um, I would define it as... Uh, advice or guidance that is rooted in biblical um, and biblical advice or principles. Okay. All right. Tabitha, you look like you were going to say something. Uh -huh. um, just to add a little bit to what she said, because that's um, what I would say as well. Um, but also um, to me, it's kind of case by case um, based on individual um, needs. So whatever's wholesome for that person, mm -hmm. um, you know, would be wise counsel as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I love that. So it could be, so generally speaking, it could be mm -hmm. what Sierra was saying, but then we also have to add that kind of individuality component. Mm -hmm. Okay, got mm -hmm. it. Derek, what are your mm -hmm. thoughts? My thoughts are counsel, wise counsel to define that, I have to kind of define counsel first. Okay. And counsel is something that's really a part of everyday life. Mm -hmm. um we we as parents we counsel our children we bring them up giving them uh knowledge hopefully they don't have to go through stuff maybe we went through or something like that um and we hope that they listen mm -hmm. um and again that's that's usually on them whether they do or not uh our friends may give us some type of uh relationship or business advice or something like that um and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, we get counsel every day. Somebody might uh, see us looking in the paper and tell us Bitcoin's doing good. You should invest in that. Or <laughs> we get counsel all the time. Um, wise counsel is knowing what counsel to take and know knowing what not to take. Mm -hmm. Wise counsel is being able to trust someone and to be able to listen to what you're hearing and, and to know that while you're listening, they, in that wise counsel, they will be okay if you choose to go another route. Mm. Mm. 
I, I want to jump on that right now, but I'm, I'm going <laughs> to pull myself back. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you just said a mouthful. I think that is such a key part. Is this a two-way street? Mm. The person yeah. providing counsel, it is important for them to understand that you, at the end of the day, who they're counseling has a choice. Exactly. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm 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 gonna restrain myself because I have so many <laughs> thoughts um, for that one. So I have written down a couple of scriptures um, because I feel like, again, in church culture, there are things that we say and we just assume the people we're talking to know what we're talking about, but they could have a very different definition. So I'm glad you all share your thoughts. So Proverbs one five says. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. With an S. Proverbs 24 and 6 says, For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in the multitude of counselors there is safety. And so I looked up the word counsel in the concordance, and it's listed as plural. So it says when you're getting counsel, you're getting counsel from a multitude of people. Mm -hmm. And it's it mentioned steerage, guidance, and plan. So considering those scriptures and considering you guys' definitions, would you say it is necessary for believers to get wise counsel? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Um, I think that a lot of what all of us have said is kind of rooted in developing those relationships with someone. So um, I think that it, it goes, developing those relationships goes hand in hand with okay. getting wise people. And as, as, as people in the church believers, um, we're, that's what we're led to do. I mean, what is it? Proverbs, what, what is it 2017? It says iron sharpens iron and a friend sharpens a friend. Um, we can pull up That's the Bible if you want us. We don't. I, I don't. Know. <laughs> it's it's twenty seven seventeen. Oh, Proverbs twenty seven seventeen. Okay. I spoke mm -hmm. and a friend sharp as a friend. So I absolutely. Okay. Wonderful. Tabitha or Derek. Is it necessary? I believe so. I believe so. I believe that it's wise to not make decision like especially big decisions mm -hmm. without some type of wise counsel because mm -hmm. i mean look at our look at our world today look mm -hmm. at uh presidents you know they have a multitude of counselors right now what if we had a president well not to get on the political part but what if we had mm -hmm. a president that <laughs> didn't listen to all their counsel mm -hmm. and I think we kind of sort of kind of went through that, but, um, <laughs> but um, and, and it, it's, it's good to take in uh, some of it, but at the end, at the end result, the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's good to have that counsel, but it's also to be wise and put on the mind of Christ so you can filter out what you should do and what you should Okay. All right. All right. And Tabitha? So I absolutely believe it is, as the scripture says, there is safety in the, the council. Um, and not only that, just to kind of make it more um, just in the natural sense, um, it gives you a different perspective. Mm. You know, sometimes to hear things in a different way uh, will help you versus you know you're, you're only seeing things through you know your lens uh mm -hmm. sometimes we can you know see things wrong and then having someone else to kind of you know bring in a different perspective of what it is it, it could um definitely save you you know time energy like you know all of those things and then i thought of the other scripture where it talks about you know no no man goes and just starts building anything they they count up the cost they see you know what all am I getting into so having that outside perspective helps you look at things in a different manner to where you can you know make sure you researched and got all you know uh as much as possible because sometimes it's you know 
we don't always know everything. Um, but as much as possible, that counsel will help you, um, especially if it's coming from someone who is pure, uh, their motives are pure. Um, that is very important. And not only that, but I do feel like um, confirmation comes. Uh, multiple confirmations will let you know. And that all will agree, basically, if you're, you know, if, if you're heading in the right, the, uh, right direction, it will all agree. So um, absolutely, I believe wise counsel is very, very, very important. Right. I love that. And I see where Sister Anita is hopping on to join us. Um, can I, can I add something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, kind of added on to what Tabitha was saying, um, I absolutely agree. And I, I want to, I guess, a, just a little bit of a tweak, only because um, one of the things that I wanted to say is wise counsel should, like you said, give you confirmation. So that means that you should be seeking God first. Mm. Um, you shouldn't be going to the people first because that can end up with you in confusion and God is not the author of confusion. Right. So counsel should definitely be giving you confirmation or they should be um, leading you in, in a path of growth and accountability or either turning you back to seek God first. If they're mm -hmm. just taking it upon themselves, then we're kind of getting into the muddy waters, but they should definitely be, if you have not, if you are getting wise counsel from somebody that's within the church, that person should first be directing you to God. And if yeah. they are not, then you need to kind of reevaluate your order of operations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys made some very valid points. Sister Nita, you popping on with us? As she is, is popping on, I think you all mentioned two things that I really wanted to highlight. One, Tabitha, you mentioned the fact that when we seek wise counsel, they give us that space of objectivity. Because mm -hmm. sometimes when we want to do something, whether we felt like we heard from God or not, we're so straight, narrow, determined that, that we might not see the fault mm -hmm. or the downside or heard God say, wait, like, you know what I'm saying? And so when we're getting that mm -hmm. wise counsel, they can help us really determine, as Sierra was saying, what God said mm -hmm. and help to order our steps in the most appropriate way, as opposed to us just rushing out and maybe doing something in a time that wasn't the way it was supposed to be done. Mm -hmm. Sister Anita, anything you want to pop? We were just talking about how we define wise counsel and whether or not it was necessary for believers. Anything you want to add to that? Can you hear me, Sister Anita? Mike's muted. Yeah, Mike's muted. Okay, I don't know if she can hear me. Hopefully she, she will hear me and will pop on. So you guys made some excellent um, points about the benefits of wise counsel and why it's so important for believers to get wise counsel. So with that in mind, how should a leader provide that counsel to the sheep? Is there a way to go about that in the best way? When you say sheep, you mean God's people, right? And not the congregation. I mean, however you take it, however you take it, answer however you, however you heard it. I feel like it's kind of loaded a little bit, but okay. I would just say very carefully. Okay. And, <laughs> and so is it, so is it loaded in the sense that don't call, don't say sheep, say congregate. Like what, what part is loaded and then go into the very carefully part. So when I, when I think one, my first thought was not all leaders are in the pulpit and not all God's people are in the congregation. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and then my thought went to, when I think of sheep, I think of just blindly following. And so okay. when I think of sheep in, in reference of a leader, then I, I would only say that in accordance to God. 
Okay. Um, if I'm talking about the congregation or people that are sitting up under a leadership, I would just say congregation. That was just my thought process. Cause when I think of sheep, I think blind, like, you know, just blindly following, like I have no, I don't, I, don't, I can't do this on my own. Um, okay. But, you know, obviously we know that, the, well, not obvious, but many of us know that the Bible tells us that there's, God is no respected person. So I can see God just like my leadership can. So there shouldn't be any just blind following. Mm-hmm. That's why I say very carefully because um, you don't want to allow your advice or your uh, wise counsel or your good intentions even mm-hmm. to lead someone astray or to direct someone in the path that God is not leading them down. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, that's interesting because when I when I wrote the question about sheep, I was thinking congregation because we are called to be sheep. So it's interesting that the association was made between sheep and blindly following. Mm. So I just want to point that out because I'm probably going to come back to that. <laughs> Anybody, either uh, Tabitha or Derek want to talk about how a leader should actually provide wise counsel? Um, I'll tackle it. Uh, yes, I, I believe uh, number one is the word of God. You got to crack open that Bible. And yes. one thing that I, I feel that sometimes we as leaders kind of struggle with mm-hmm. is sometimes we just got to say, I don't know. Let me get back with you. That's good. Mm-hmm. Let, me, let me just get back with you at a later point. Let me go pray. And sometimes we uh, will come out and say something. And like, 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 like y'all were saying about the blindly following Mm -hmm. leader could be giving his opinion but that person is taking it as a word of god Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in that way as 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 a pastor one must say to them this is my opinion it's okay to give your opinion but let them know that's your opinion Mm -hmm. and if you you feel the holy ghost moving then let them know that's the holy ghost talking and 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 one big thing about that depending on the, like, depending on the type of counsel, if it's just a question in, pa- in passing, or if this is like a lengthy thing, like you're sitting down talking or something like that, you got to start and end with prayer. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to, you got to allow God the opportunity to come into your conversation. Mm-hmm. And, and, and another important aspect is a pastor has to, a leader in general has to remember that I, I i remember this meme this meme it had a, a person sitting on like a, a, a like a kind of like a throne with a whip mm-hmm. hit, hitting people making them making them pull the throne and they was like that's a boss but a leader was in the front of the crowd pulling it all together you know mm-hmm. and and a leader must be whatever you ask to do, you'll do, you yeah. know, because your first job as a leader is to serve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I, I appreciate that. And I think that ties into Sierra, what you were saying is leadership is not necessarily a title. A mm-hmm. leader could be anyone. And so mm-hmm. anyone could give sage counsel, wise counsel, right. and doing it in a way like you were saying, Derek, where I'm not suggesting anything to you that I wouldn't do or I haven't done or I haven't experienced and bringing that in. So it's not this whole like superior, you know, superior versus inferior type thing for sure. Tabitha, anything you want to add and and anybody watching any comments, you are welcome to share your thoughts. Um, I think, uh, Sierra and Derek both, you know, kind of explained it, you know, very well of, and the only thing I would just add, um, I, my background is actually in communication. Um, so I studied a lot on leadership training, human development. Um, and, you know, growing up in the church, a lot of times we see communication going on that is not always the best. Mm way to have conversations okay um and I feel like it really kind of you know one a lot of it has to do with personality like 
how your personality type, you know, um, whether you're the, the, the mm-hmm. leader or the mm-hmm. recipient, you know, whoever is, you know, receiving end of it, um, how, what is going to be best, you know, for that to reach that person? So that's why I was, you know, I'm really big on like catering the message, but if it's for, you know, let's uh, say the, the congregation, um, I do feel like it has to be God inspired. Mm-hmm. Um, and as Derek was saying, you know, if it's your opinion, then absolutely uh, say that. And then, um, but also beyond that, if it's something that's rooted in you, uh, you have to be confident enough in who you are that you can separate, okay, this is me, this is God. Mm -hmm. Um, And being able to express that and not feel like, you know, someone is attacking you if they disagree or, you know, you have to be able uh, and be, confident enough in who you are um, to be able to really, you know, speak certain things to the congregation or whoever, you know, is listening. So um, for me, I'm always going to kind of go back to like the personality types, the, you know, how, how, how can this person receive what I'm saying versus, you know, because I'm confident enough in myself that my intentions are to make sure that I'm saying what God tells me to say and not just saying it because it sounds good. Right. Um, you know, whatever's going to be best for that person or for the environment that I'm in at that moment. So um, that's that's kind of what my thoughts were around that question. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think that was really good. And I like what you said about communication style and, and personality type. Goes mm-hmm. back to what Derek said earlier about who you're actually talking to, mm-hmm. and how they can receive it. And I think that's kind of a, an excellent segue and to the next question, which is, what would you say controlling leadership looks like? Ooh. <laughs> well, Derek, Derek chuckled first. So Derek, you <laughs> yeah. that first. So <laughs> I was like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, controlling leadership is leadership that will tear you down instead of build you up. Controlling leadership is leadership that that um, will they they crack the whip pretty much, mm-hmm. and re- like one thing, especially with us men, one thing that's big with us is respect. Mm-hmm. A lot of time in controlling leadership, sometimes it cannot be it it, it, it comes across as not being there. Mm-hmm. And the position is the justification for it. Okay. And um, I, I mean, I've seen situations where um, a husband told their wife to do something and the pastor, um, it was about quitting a job and the pastor uh, told her to do something else knowing what the husband said. Mm. And you know, when it comes to the order of God, you know, the word past ain't in there, <laughs> you know, so um, that was a little That's bit off. In the other category. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it's all about uh, never forgetting that no matter how big you are in leadership, you're a servant. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Tap with us, Sierra. You were out. <laughs> so um, I actually wrote some, like I wrote down someone who abuses their power, the, the power of leadership, because we all know that being a leader, you automatically are have a certain level of power that you yield or wield over other people um, just by things that you say in a leadership position mm-hmm. over certain people people are going to take it and do it because just because you said it. Um, and a lot of times people will do that without you know, any question. So someone who definitely abuses that leadership power, someone who uh, prefers to go unchecked or unchallenged. Mm. Um, so if you are someone in leadership and your congregation or really nobody can come to you and say, show it to me in the Bible or you know, challenge anything that you say, mm either across the pulpit or just on a one-on-one conversation, that's a problem. 
Um, and then I, I will also say, <laughs> when I when I wrote this down, I kind of chuckled because I've actually heard this from across the pulpit, which I was like, um, someone who follow who who uh, leads in the swallow and follow mentality. Um, which is directly against what the word of God says. The word of God says, speak for yourself. And so if, if a leadership is telling you just do basically what I say across this pulpit, that is absolutely wrong um, and absolutely an abuse of power. And then you have, you know, you crossed over into the controlling um, mm -hmm. aspect of your leadership. Okay. All right. Tabitha. Um, yeah, I definitely, um, you know, I feel like when it comes to controlling um, one of the things that I always, I always watch out for is if I cannot ask a question. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, you know, Sierra was saying that we were, um, raised in my father. He always taught us, uh, study the scripture for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, we were allowed to ask him questions, but I do know of churches where if you ask questions, that is a sign of disrespect. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like controlling gets, um, it starts getting controlling when there's no no boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're speaking to certain things that that really should be like it, Derek brought up about you know the husband and the wife. Um, there are certain things that yes, I do feel like, and this is of course me never being in the role of a pastor, but you know, observing a lot of them. Some things that go on in marriages are, you know, supposed to stay in marriage, um, but sometimes the pastor can go in and say different things and I'm just like mm, I don't know and, but I mean and, and you know of course these are all I will always go back to you know case by case you know every situation is different um so you never know you know sometimes it may call for the pastor to you know speak to certain things within a marriage but if that is like the norm for everybody in the church or you know it, it, it's a it's something that goes on consistently then clearly that's not case by case. That may be um, something that the, you know, the pastor is kind of overstepping or um, just not respecting that boundary of, you know, the fact that you are supposed to have a relationship with God and God is the head. Um, I was recently speaking to someone um, about a situation and if I could replace, if I could take God's name out and put their name there, then to me, that may be a control situation, manipulation control situation. So um, that's kind of what I, you know, see. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And then yeah. Anthony said, I'm sorry, Sierra. Anthony said, controlling leadership wants to dictate everything about your life. You can't do anything without their permission. Yeah, um, I would also put like a, a little asterisk on something that Tabitha said. Um, with in reference to like the pastor being in a part of like the marriage or just every aspect of your life and let the only time that that may be not not all the way okay but close to being okay is if you are receiving some type of counseling from this pastor um within your relationship like husband wife that like all y'all in the space together it shouldn't be a situation where the pastor is talking to the wife separately from the husband and giving any time any type of advice but if you all are seeking guidance um if the pastor is is like actually a therapist or a counselor like licensed that's great um if not then your pastor needs to know that they need to refer you to an actual therapist mm -hmm. family therapist um, family relationship therapist if it kind of exceeds their expertise, whatever your issues are that you're dealing with. So there are some situations where the pastor may know more information, but if you hear your story across the pulpit, that, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, sure. sure. that. Yes, please do. Um, one thing that, that I've seen in my experience and all of that, and it, it just really clicked in my head just now. Um, as I was coming up, um, in church and all of that. Uh, I had a, a, a pastor who, he he kind of, a lot of stuff he taught me, I, I have to give him credit is, is has brought me to who I am today. Okay. But in that, um, he taught me, he taught me things like, um, always seek God for yourself. 
you told me things like um sometimes man can be wrong mm -hmm. always see god but then as we, as i became an adult well i was about like 20 when i met him but as i got a little older got a little wiser um i started asking more questions like Hmm, this looks wrong. What does this Bible verse mean? Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be answered. It would be combated with another Bible verse. Mm. And then um, later on down the line, uh, it was actually said, um, when I say something to you, automatically mm. assume it's from God because I'm not going to talk to you unless it's from God. Mm. Okay. So... Um, that that is the <laughs> biggest best example of controlling leadership I can give Ooh. because um, um, this man taught me to never believe that every word someone says is God's word. Mm -hmm. you, you you have to know God for yourself. Yeah. You have to you know work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes, mm -hmm. and and. That's that that's something that that now that I'm older, I've pastored myself and all of that. I, I thank God because um, and this is what I would suggest for others, too. When you when when you ask him what this scripture mean and you always get combated with another scripture, learn the scriptures for yourself. Then they can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, when you learn that scripture, when you get somebody that you can trust. And if you got questions, go to them. Mm -hmm. Then they can't fire back at you because then when they try to change it with another scripture, you go, uh-uh, let's go back to this scripture. What does this scripture mean? Right, right. So. Yeah, let me ask you all this. I have two questions, but the, the first thing that came to mind because the examples were given about controlling leadership, it's like when it's obvious, like they're saying across the pulpit, do what I say. Like if I say it, it's from God or, you know, if it comes across his pulpit, that's it or those kind of things. What about those controlling leaders that are a little more sneaky and sly and manipulative with their controlling where you don't even know until way after? <laughs> I didn't and say this 2020 they orchestrated your steps and you were none the wiser. Um, If I can kind of go into that, I feel like... It, there's always signs God never you know he he always gives his children signs like you know you think about the children of Israel he led them through 40 days you know you know cloud by you know day pillar by night or whatever so they God always shows signs so for me I feel like um and I always tell people you cannot plant an orange seed and and get an apple mm -hmm. it doesn't okay. so you're to me if you are praying and asking God you know to constantly lead you he is going you're going to see it um something is going to be off uh and as Derek was saying if they're combative you know if you ask him a question and it doesn't come from a spirit of meekness um if, if the fruits of the spirit are not being shown you're, you're you're asking questions you're feeling like wait a minute something's you know, you kind of, because all of us, I feel like we all get that in us where we're like, wait a minute, something's not lining up here. If you're starting to question that, don't just be like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to believe him. I'm just going to, because you need to be asking God, you be praying, saying, God, okay, what's going on? Is this something that I, and not only that, you should be praying for your leaders, um, that they will always be led of God, because the truth of the matter is, we're all human. We all have our moments where we make mistakes. Um, leaders are not perfect. They, they're not. Um, and and I, I, I'm one, so I can say that right. we are not perfect. Uh, we will have times where we get it wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why we need the prayers. You, you need to pray for them. Um, but to me, it always, you know, I watch for if a leader can come back and say, you know, I'm sorry, I had that wrong. Or, you know, if they're inviting, if they're open to, you know, they're welcome to uh, welcoming to you asking questions or you wanting to get a true understanding. Um, it, it won't be the situation where it's like, uh, 
you can't say nothing to them. You know, you're just supposed to do exactly what they say. Right. If you don't do it, then you, you go, you're on your way to hell. You know, it, it won't be that, uh, that feeling. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Really, everything I was writing, every time I started to write something down, you said it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> but, I was like, dang. <laughs> it was all good. But um, the only thing, the only thing you like kind of didn't say is we ignore the red flags. But you kind of said that though. Like, like you said, God, God shows us signs. And um pastors, leaders, and church leaders outside of church, they're just people. They're they're people as well. You have to, like you said, like Tapka said, you have to remember a person is just a person mm-hmm. and they're flawed people and they make mistakes. Um, and sometimes even in leadership, even in church leadership, they don't admit their mistakes, but God will show, you will see the red flags. And unfortunately, when it comes to people that we look up to, when it comes to leadership, um, people that we are in intimate relationship with, we tend to ignore the red flags. We tend to ignore the signs. And then that's when we get into a, I didn't realize or hindsight 2020 situation when Mm -hmm. all along, um, like she said, had we been, had we been seeking God for ourselves and Mm -hmm. studying the scriptures for ourselves and, you know, doing other things and not just putting all of our eggs in this one wise counselor's basket, Mm -hmm. then you would have been a better situation. Right. Right. Um, on Facebook, is it Naya? Nia said the spirit of God always reveals. And he does. I think that's what we're all saying. And we have to be in a place, you know, as congregants, as members, as sheep, <laughs> we have to be in a place where we can hear from God. And I guess that's why I was asking the question about the manipulative part, because if you've been raised in this do what I say it even if you see the red flags if you don't know how to identify that if you've never been in a situation that's contrary to that you might not recognize that you're being controlled are you being manipulated are you being coerced because that's all you know so I think it's so important as we you know in the body of Christ or whatever the situation is like we remember the s on counsel it's not just that one person telling you how to live your life of course god but there are also other wise people or should be wise people in your circle who can kind of counteract something Mm -hmm. if you are being told something that is clearly contrary to the word of god or somebody's opinion that they're living you know and dictating as gospel so any thoughts on that before we go to the the next question can I just add a little bit to that, what you were just saying, when, when it gets to where there's only one person, now I do believe in, you know, having that respect, you know, for your pastor, uh, for the voice of your pastor, because I do believe it's important, but um, you start kind of getting into isolation if they want you to cut out everybody else, or they're trying to paint the picture like anybody else that has anything else to say is, you know, um, they, they're, they're not, you know, basically you shouldn't be listening to them only what they say that is isolation um and that kind of starts you know getting into other stuff that we'll 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 have a conversation about later down the road um but basically spiritual abuse so um yeah anytime it starts getting to where only one person yeah 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 I can't <laughs> just quick plug because Tabitha is doing a whole conversation on April 14th. <laughs> 13, 13. 13, 13, my bad. On April 13th. So be sure to join in for that. And then Erica also mentioned also when you're raised in it and it has become so indoctrinated within you, it almost makes you feel guilty for questioning because you feel you are being disobedient before God. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. 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 So definitely, it, 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 it's no longer about conviction. It's guilt. It's condemnation because <laughs> you had it written down too. <laughs> we were sitting at the same time as condemnation. <laughs> yeah, it's condemnation. And yeah, it's so, it's so much to think about. Like even when you all were talking, I think Tabitha, you made the point 
where someone was speaking and like, if you could put their name in where you should put God's name in, the level of responsibility to want to be that type of person yeah. is mind boggling to me. I don't ever want to kind of sort of be close to in a position of God in anybody's life. Amen. You know? and you know like, I don't think people want to be in that position wholeheartedly I think that they I think that people tend to when they put themselves at that level I don't think they want the true responsibility of that level um so they they want the accolades and the mm-hmm. um, admonishment and the, the 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 perks that come along mm-hmm. with being elevated by other people um the celebrity the the celebrity that comes along with it but when it comes to the service part of it i don't think they truly want it like they they try to be slain in the spirits praying for folks day and night and you know showing up at bedsides and showing up at hospital they ain't trying to do that part of it Mm -hmm. it's the it's the Mm -hmm. the the glamorous parts Mm -hmm. that attracts certain people yeah yeah i put another twist on this go ahead Derek. (laughs) <laughs> um, I also say that mm. you have to be careful on who you decide to get counsel from. Mm-hmm. Whether it's it, like when you go to a church, don't pick that that's your church home just because they got some good worship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, don't you walk in the door, you see people jumping around. Don't just say that's my home. You know, mm-hmm. and, and I'm I'm saying that because been there, done that. <laughs> Um, but you have to, you have to be able to trust because a lot of times nowadays, everyone is so, um, into, I, I hear from God that they're not, uh, checking it by the word of God. Mm -hmm. So in that you have to realize that the plan of salvation is in the Bible first, not what you hear. Mm. So in that, you have to, whoever you decide to get your your counsel from, you have to be sure that they're Bible-based and the Bible is their first agenda. Mm -hmm. They're not, um, they're not just wanting to just, they, I've seen people that kind of made me laugh a few times. I'd ask somebody a question and they just look up the sky. Yeah, God said this and that, this and that. <laughs> but I'm like, wow, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not in your spirit, huh? Right. <laughs> I was like, how you just do that? Wow. <laughs> so, I mean, you got to trust them that they are in that word and they will. And honestly, if they counsel you and you don't hear some of the word in the council, question the council. Mm-hmm. 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 That's a good point. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, Erica also said it's almost like you have to be reprogrammed and I think that's so true when you have been raised oh. or indoctrinated into a certain way of thinking so to actually learn like y'all are saying what does the bible say for yourself what yeah, does it say you can counteract yeah you know what I'm saying you you can filter it through that lens I'm not gonna say yeah. counteract you can filter it through that lens of is yeah. this what God's word actually says, or is this just your opinion? Right. Yeah. Um, someone else said, sheep know the voice of God and a stranger they will not hear. Right. Amen. Mm-hmm. And then we had a question before I read the Pastor Sharp post. Um, at what point does the control become cult activity? <laughs> Anybody want to? take a, a stab at that Sierra I know we kind of talked a little bit about that in the first church culture so Azarina go back to to the very first one in February we talked about church culture and cult Sierra um I would say to use a horrible reference <laughs> when everybody is drinking the Kool-Aid I mean obviously that's the extreme version but if no one in the space is willing to challenge anything or anyone in leadership Mm -hmm. and everyone is kind of following without um just this blind follow without any reference to the scripture or without any any um 
without wanting to fit, find it for themselves, you know, without trying the spirit by the spirit, without really looking for the fruit. If you, if you're closed off from the other world, it, it kind of mimics just like any other abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. If you become closed off from, from the, mm -hmm. from the other world, um, other people in the world, um, if you are not bringing people in actively and retaining them because um, other people that are coming in are noticing something is not right. So they're leaving. So those things I think are, are very evident of um, if your ministry is not growing <laughs> um, at all. And I'm not even talking about numbers because sometimes it's not a numbers thing, but if you're, if you're, if the people spiritually are not growing, then that's a problem as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. There. Oh, sorry. I um feel like if this is a Holy Ghost filled, Holy Ghost filled, Holy Spirit filled church, um, when it almost seems as if the Holy Ghost is not allowed to move and operate, then another spirit will. Mm. So that's where you will get in the spirit of you know manipulation and control, witchcraft, basically. Um, because the Holy Ghost is not able to come in and break all of that up and be, you know, do what the Holy Ghost do. So um, that's, yeah, I just wanted to add that because she was saying everything, you know, she was talking real good. So I just wanted to add that in there because I, I have um, recognized that um, in, in some churches where, um, and, and, years later although it, you know it took a little time for it to reveal but you know my sister Desnaya uh, my sister said the Holy Ghost will reveal um, when those situations are going on so the whole time is just making sure your eyes are open and you know for it to not get to the cult um, level mm -hmm. you got to let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost yeah. do yeah. and if you don't it will eventually become a cult just get real so yeah, yeah. Derek if it's not if you can't everything like if you go into it and you can't you see more i guess you could say more disagreeing with the bible than in for the bible mm. that's good one out <laughs> because, um, i i i i in my and how can i put this uh Back in the day, in the Bible days, uh, the, the scriptures with David and when he came into the city dancing and mm -hmm. praising and all, we, that's something that's great in churches, you know, get your praise on, dance, all of that. But what's being preached? Mm -hmm. Are there things you're seeing that's not of God? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, the end goal is to get to heaven, but are the leaders preparing you day by day because before you get there there is no you automatically go down in the water come back up and automatically you're in heaven mm -hmm. right you got to live yeah. here yeah so are you being taught what to do in your everyday life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. um if they if you are if you're in a church that's full of married people is there marriage marriage classes going on Mm -hmm. if, if you're in a church that got a lot of kids is mm -hmm. there a good Sunday school department mm -hmm. I mean you got to you you know you got to know how to to point out the things that are needed in your life mm -hmm. and see if that church can provide that for you right right that's so good I want to read this this post but before I do that Sierra you said something about um you know, if is the church growing? Are people coming in, but they're not they're not coming back? And I feel like even when that happens, sometimes if it is a controlling spirit over the leadership, then that is uh, presented as in a way of like, well, they just they just don't want to know the truth. They oh, just yeah. don't know. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not. It's always somebody else being fault. mindful of the fact. <laughs> well, maybe I need to be introspective. And yeah. consider that maybe, <laughs> possibly, it could be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it, it's a conversation. It, the conversation is always about what those people who aren't coming back are doing wrong. Right. And so I think that's another red flag to be mindful of, of not really considering why that is the case. You know? 
So I, I think that's a, a, a good point you mentioned. So Tabitha, your sister also said, or when anyone wants more attention all the time, as opposed to giving God um, the attention. And Erica says, that's a good point. Sometimes messages are preached that point more to the one preaching the message than, mm. than to God. Yeah, yeah. And if I could just ask you that, my sister is yeah. like almost my twin, y'all. We literally do like everything together all the time anyway. Um, but I wanted to add that, um, when it, it, it comes to uh, the leader, if it's where, you know, they, because again, we are human, we make mistakes. Where I think we go wrong, because like uh, I think Sierra said, I don't think they go in intentionally, you know, wanting to, you know, develop into this controlling person. Um, I think sometimes, you know, basically the root of what takes place is when we don't stay submitted to God stay at his feet, um, allowing him to lead us in everything that we do. Um, we start thinking, you know, hey, we figured it out or, you know, we kind of now we got these people under us doing what we're saying, doing. If we don't keep ourselves subjected, whatever issues that we had never healed from or, or God, let God um, deliver us from, they will take center stage if we don't keep God there. Mm -hmm. And that's where, you know, sometimes that control comes from, um, you know, the manipulation and all that comes from is that insecurity or that thing we didn't allow God to really uh, clean us up from. Um, and yeah, so I just wanted to kind of add that, that whenever we take God and or we don't keep him at the mm -hmm. forefront, mm -hmm. other things will take right. his place. So, right. Mm -hmm. And we have plenty of biblical examples mm -hmm. where people have done that. Yeah. So it is nothing new under the sun. So I want, I want to read this quote. So I love myself some Pastor Reginald Wayne Sharp Jr. of mm -hmm. the Fellowship Church in Chicago. And he had made this post. Um, it's probably been a month or so ago now. And he said, I cringe every time I see a post exhorting young pastors to be loyal and faithful to their, quote, fathers and mothers in ministry. I agree that loyalty, respect, and faithful service is needed. However, there is another side to the coin that is too often, that too often is ignored. We also need fathers and mothers in ministry to be loyal to their spiritual children and mentees. Spiritual abuse is real. Maybe we need to begin to remind some of our spiritual leaders to stop abusing, using, shaming, and mishandling the people who God has trusted to their spiritual care. Loyalty is a two-way street. Sow it and you'll reap it. None of us own anybody. It's manipulative to act like people can't make decisions for themselves and their own destinies. Remember, just because you hear from God through your pastor, mentor, spiritual mother, or father, doesn't mean that they are your God. I see too much manipulation, toxic power, and abuse in the body of Christ. Since the leaders may not change it, make sure you do. When I read that, y'all, I was like, I'm driving to Chicago just to drop the mic and right. drive back to St. Louis. <laughs> oh my gosh, that like, <laughs> what we're talking about. Any thoughts? I don't know if y'all saw, saw the post before I tagged you in it or sent it to you but any thoughts about what pastor sharp was saying mm -hmm. Derek, I'll, I'll start with you yeah okay um <laughs> i totally agree with him um i agree with him because we we as 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 pastors especially when when we first are you know when we're young in, in the lord and all of that um we look for our, our pastoral fathers and our pastoral mothers. We look for them for that, for that spiritual strength when we are in that jam, when we, because when you get in a leadership, there are spiritual attacks that you get faced with that are new. You like where this come from. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, you, the, the ones who's been through this, the one who's been pastoral, uh, pastoring for a good amount of time they they they're supposed to guide you they're supposed to help you they're supposed to bind with you in prayer you know um mm -hmm. strengthen you because you the people that you're leading 
you got to be there to help strengthen them. So, and that's why I believe that in, in, in church period, not just in leadership, the word submission is key mm. because not only do you, and it all, it all, to me, it all goes to trust. You got to find someone that you trust is straight about God, nothing else. Mm-hmm. And then when you do that, you submit to, I trust that if I give you, uh, if I sit under the learning branch, that you're going to serve as what your, what your title calls for you to do. You're not going to bully me. You're not going to tear me down. You're not mm-hmm. going to do this. You're not, you're going to serve. And that's, that's, there are many churches out here. You, I go up the street right now. If I, before I get a mile, I probably find about four churches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to find the right way that a church should be, you might not find as many as you will find churches. Mm-hmm. So you have to really just, just, just allow God to take you to the right place mm-hmm. where you can trust, submit, and then as you're learning, as you're teaching, it all just flows the way God intended it to flow. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Sierra, Tabitha. Um, <laughs> there was, there was, I, I was, I was riding with it. And then there was one line and it, it was some, the, the, the second to last one, I think it was where it was says it, it's manipulative to, to think something. Can you, can you reread that one? Yeah. Let me go back to it. Um, um, he's where it said, I see too much manipulation. No, where it was oh, like, okay. it's, uh, it's, ma- it's manipulative to act like people can't make decisions for themselves and their own destinies. That one? I, yes. Um, that was the only, only line that I was like, uh, I don't know if I would have used the word manipulative. Um, I, I, presumptuous, assuming, yes, absolutely. Um, I think that when leaders get to that point where they feel like, folks can't make their own decisions. I think that they're doing it based off of historical, like other people coming to them for every single decision. So they kind of just take it on for everybody that comes to them. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't think that that comes from a place of manipulation. I think that that comes from a place of just not giving people the benefit of, of the doubt. Um, so that was the only part that I was like, eh, I don't know if I would use that word, but all the rest of it, absolutely agree. I think that there is a level of um outside of that i think that there is a level of some manipulation that goes on in leadership i think that a lot of people um who are who are in leadership can can fall victim i don't think anybody comes into this situation with ill intentions or with the intention to to be this way but i think that like we've talked about before you can't fall victim to it and it and it comes you know because of ego because you're not getting into your word because you are not submitted to any type of leadership um so all of these things can kind of come into play when for a leader um your congregation needs to be praying for you you should have other leaders that are in your circle peers that should be praying for you and you should be coming together to to help prevent or combat against those things because i mean we know in in all situations satan goes after the head so mm-hmm. that's the head of the household. If it's the husband, that's the head of the church. <laughs> I feel like Satan's gonna go after the head because once you cut off the head, the the, the body falls. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, so we definitely need to be in a situation where we're praying for our leaders. And yes, that post was like all of the things were correct. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> Tabitha. Absolutely. Um, I, I think like when he first uh wrote it, I definitely shared it. Um, because I, I feel like that's one of the main um, things that God is leading me in this season to do is to help people understand like, okay, this is what manipulation is. Mm -hmm. This is what controlling looks like. Um, Because I think, and and Sierra was actually starting to hit on it. um, Culturally, you know, the pastor did everything, you know, in the, especially in the black community we went to the pastor for everything so a lot of these things were just passed down and taught to other pastors Mm -hmm. so sometimes they may not even know actually what you're doing is manipulation 
that's, that's controlling. Point. So um, to help, um, you know, that's why you have, you know, Reginald Sharp, who is, um, well, Pastor Reginald Sharp, who is, you know, talking about these things. You have a uh, mental health, mental health therapist, y'all get tongue tied, sorry, uh, that are coming in to, you know, help um, teach and, and, and give psychoeducation about when you, you know, so certain things, this will be, you know, the, the root of it physically, mentally, emotionally, this is what it will look like. Um, so I think it's, you know, God is giving there anything that happens in the earth, he always sends an answer for it. So, um, you know, with all that has gone on, I feel like God is raising up people now to come in and be able to, you know, help and say, hey, this is how God wants us to move now. So um, I absolutely believe, I mean, agree with everything that he said in that post. Um, and it's, it's important that we talk about it now. So definitely. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, MJ on Facebook said, not giving people the benefit of the doubt is an excellent point. She believes her ex-pastor had some good intentions, but it just mm -hmm. wasn't right to do. So however he did it, however he was leading the church, it just didn't seem right. And it's funny, mm -hmm. Sierra, because that line is manipulative to act like people can't make decisions for themselves or their own destinies. Like, I love that line. I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. it, it made me. And I was like, yeah. but here's, here's why. Here's why I appreciated that line is because it made me think about other relationships. And so usually when I think about my God's relationship with me, I think about my relationship with my child. And mm -hmm. if I never allow him to make decisions and mistakes, even if I know it's wrong, it's, it's part of my, my parenting and allowing him to learn through natural and logical consequences. Go on and stub your toe. Go on and burn your hand on the stove. Go, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying run out in the street, but there's a certain level of you kind of have to see it mm -hmm. and experience some things. Right. for you to know that you hear from God or don't. If I'm always telling you, if I'm not allowing you that space to make those decisions, to me, that's manipulative and controlling. So I don't know, mm -hmm. I can, you know, it's not like I can talk to Pastor Sharp, so I don't know exactly what he meant when he no, said I actually, that's I how I heard it. it. No, I can mm -hmm. see that in, in like, when you put it in that in the in that context, yes, I can I can absolutely see that because if you think about it as a child, parent, child, and just I think about you know with my children in the in the sense of manipulating the way that they make their own decisions mm -hmm. because of my, my guidance, you know, in trying to guide them, I'm basically pushing them in a certain direction. Mm -hmm. So I can absolutely see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, yeah, go for it, Derek. I believe sometimes there's a such thing called accidental manipulation mm. because sometimes uh, we get so um, I'm hearing God's voice, mm -hmm. but we don't check it against God's word mm -hmm. and we, we get so used to hearing God's voice and we may hear it a lot, but we got to remember that, that, the devil is always working on his game, trying to imitate God's voice. Mm -hmm. So even if we've been doing this for however many years, we got to know that, that sometimes the devil will try to throw a curveball at us and, and, mm -hmm. and make it, make us think it's God talking when it's not. Mm -hmm. So then when, when, a leader, when we as leaders put, puts forth the word that the leader may sway up and down. That is the word of God. Mm -hmm. But they've gotten so used to doing it that way that they didn't confirm it by the Bible. Mm -hmm. And that's when you're accidentally manipulating. You're, you're, right. you're, you're, and you're coming strong at, at some, some people like, if you don't do this, then you're going against God. And, 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 and then, mm -hmm. you know, and, and even if they come at you with, uh, well, what about the word? And especially with a, a, a new saint, they come at you with the word and, and your God is saying, then you just confuse them. Right. <laughs> so. That's, true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Now I know Tabitha 
we're, we're coming up on the time where you might have to step out. So I, I don't know if you want to leave any final thoughts because I have like a couple more things I would like to discuss, but I, I want you to be able to share any final thoughts. And I also definitely want you to be able to mention your discussion next week and also your trip to Africa. So I wanted to give you a moment to do that before you just disappeared off the screen. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, I'm like, as soon as she said Africa, I got so excited. Um, so, um, uh, so yeah, next Tuesday, I am going to be uh, hosting a presentation on spiritual abuse. Um, so just recently, just to give a quick little thing, um, God is really like, he he orchestrates like everything y'all like everything um and it's so amazing how he does things um but i i was in a class and they asked us to do a presentation and for some reason on my heart it's been so heavy on spiritual abuse because i've um just being around church my entire life i've seen it happen i mean i don't think the intentions will have always been that this is what it's going to you know come to but unfortunately it has um and i've seen the hurt that people you know endure and some have even walked away from Christ because of it um so for me it is a burden it is a passion for me to help um when it comes to leadership uh you know being a pastor's kid myself you know understanding the the, the toil the things that they go through as a pastor um understanding what pastor kids go through understanding what you know church people go through um i, I just have such a, a a heart to be able to help um because at one point i needed you know i needed a therapist but in church we were taught you pray that's how you get through it that didn't work for me i dealt with depression i dealt with suicide uh, ideation uh you know i was a sexual assault victim so all while being in the church uh so going through all of that and being holy ghost filled it was like something was missing but everybody made me feel like well you know you just pray about it god is gonna do and he did deliver but i went through counseling i i you know had to find out for myself that there's nothing wrong with counseling god actually talks about it multiple times in the bible uh it, you as the shirts now say you need jesus and therapy uh i am big on that so um, I do feel like, you know, your pain definitely, uh, it, it pushes you to your purpose. My purpose now is to help those in the body of Christ who need, you know, uh, that mental, you know, help. There are people out there who believe, you know, if, if you're apostolic, you're Baptist, whatever you want to, you know, say, there are therapists out there that believe that. So my final thoughts is, if you need a therapist, do not be ashamed at all. Please, 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 please believe and know that you can you can be um, you know you can be Holy Ghost filled and need a therapist. You can pray and everything else, and the therapist can still come in and help you. Uh, I believe as they have medical doctors, they help. God created mental health therapists because they help. So um, next Tuesday, the thirteenth. We are going to be talking about spiritual abuse. It is a ten dollar uh, registration fee. That fee is going to help me um, as a fundraiser for me to be able to go to Africa. Um, unfortunately, with my COVID experience, it definitely took me out of work. And right after my COVID experience, I got the news that I was going to Africa, South Africa. Um, and the purpose of me going is to study mental health. So. I'm really excited. I feel like God has opened doors for me, you know, this year. I believe he is going to uh, bless me that I go on this trip. If anyone wants to be a blessing to me, my cash app, I can, you know, put it in the comments or anything like that. Or you can just go on my uh, page. It is like top up there um, because I am raising the funds for that. So if you want to register, all the information is on my Facebook page as well. Um, and I will have Dr. S on there as my clinical monitor because unfortunately I'm not licensed yet, but it's coming. Uh, so she is going, <laughs> thank you. So she's going to be there to just make sure that, you know, I, I'm speaking, you know, ethically and, um, you know, I have a, a mental health uh, professional there um, in support of what is being talked about. We got to talk about this spiritual abuse. It's real. It, it's happening every single day. People are suffering because of it. So God has an answer and I'm, I'm praying to be a servant to help, you know, God's people. So I hope uh, y'all have enjoyed. I've enjoyed what has been said. I'm 
I'm so geek, y'all. I know I'm like kind of stirring over what I'm saying because this is something that I'm so passionate about. So I'm so grateful. Thank you for having me on. I'm glad to have met, you know, Derek and Sierra. Um, thank you, Dr. S. I know we'll chat soon, but God bless you all. Hope to speak again <laughs> very you. soon. Thank you. And we'll see you. Well, I'll talk to you soon. And we'll definitely, yes. you all be sure to check out her page register for the conversation next week and if you even if you don't aren't interested in send her some money anyway she's going to africa <laughs> i appreciate y'all <laughs> but hey, we'll, we'll talk later god bless okay, god bless eric and sierra if you have a few more minutes i just want to kind of pick your brain about these two things really quickly if you guys have time i got yeah, all the time in the world okay so just <laughs> really quickly what would you all say to any person who feels like they've been controlled by ch uh, church leadership, whether they feel like they're dealing with it currently or they've experienced it in the past? Um, you wanna go first I'm or you that? Go, you can go ahead first, cause I'm like trying to gather my thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, if you're going through it uh, past or present, First thing I, I would say is forgive mm. because don't allow yourself to be held prisoner to something they probably ain't even remembering. So free yourself from that. Forgive. Then bring, just bring it to God. Pray mm -hmm. because you and your prayers Sometimes you ain't you don't have to do anything. Prayer is enough where you can stop the next person from going through that. Mm -hmm. Just bring it to God. And, and, and if you see it happening, everything, everything we go through brings forth wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 it makes us who we are. So if you see somebody else going through that, you should be able to come and come at them and give them a word of love mm -hmm. and help them to be strong. You know, um, we, we, we never want to uh, tear down our, our, our leadership or nothing like that, but we can, we can help the people who need it, mm -hmm. you know, um, and there's a fine line, I know, between uh, helping someone who's being abused and tearing down the leader that's abusing them, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um you, you, you gotta you gotta be able to work it out you gotta and mm -hmm. you gotta be able to bring it to god right, right. because okay. if you can't bring it to god you know better than them oh <laughs> oh certain all right sierra <laughs> oh, I'm um i would say i would i would piggyback on what Derek said and and, and definitely say pray and forgive absolutely first um, I would also say that, you know, recognize that people are just people and they, they only, uh, they only get, take the power that you give them. Mm -hmm. They can only use whatever power that you've already given them. Um, and if this is something that has happened in the past and you are now realizing that this is what something you're going through and you're going through the healing process, definitely allow yourself to go through the healing process. Um, like Tabitha said, I am, I am a big advocate for therapy. <laughs> if you've listened to any of my podcast episodes, I talk about therapy all the time. I say therapy is very important. Um, find you a therapy and find you some Jesus. So you definitely need to um, seek therapy because there may be some unpacking of things that you, you need to do because this may be a, a habit that has un, un, unfortunately become a part of your life if you are um, falling victim to this type of controlling situation in multiple relationships um, or you're seeking out leaders to uh, lead in that way mm -hmm. or people that or you're putting people in leadership positions in this space um, it definitely may be something that you you may need to unpack um, in, in, in a therapeutic situation um, or my, my word, I like to say therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not a word. I know it's not a word. But, I think it is know, a word. I, I, I think we're going to make it a word. I don't, I don't know. We're going to make a word. It's a um, lot of words that aren't words that we make words. It's a word. We can make there you it go. Um, 
So that's what I would say. If you, definitely, you, if, you, if it's been a situation in the past, if it is current, um, those same things still apply. But I would also say, if you are in a current situation that where your leadership is controlling, I would first say, you know, do what the Bible says. If you have an art with your brother, go to them. Take it to these people and let them know that this is how you are feeling. If they are receptive to it, give them the opportunity to correct it. Um, if they are not receptive to it, then that is a red flag. And maybe you need to see other, um, other, another place to worship, plain and simple. Um, you should be able to go to your leaders and worship in, in church and, you know, bro, y'all are still brothers and sisters in Christ, even though they are in a leadership position. So they should just treat you as a brother or sister in Christ and respect and love on you just as um, you mm-hmm. would anybody else. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate that. And I, it made me think about, I can't remember who said it, but in leadership positions to not take things personal. If someone comes to you because they have a concern or they feel some kind of way or they weren't sure about something, them coming to you should not necessarily be perceived as a personal attack. Right. You know, we should be mature enough as adults in the body of Christ to have those conversations and not feel like, you know, you just trying to undermine me or be disrespectful or those kind of things. So I think that's so important. And MJ said on Facebook, uh, don't be afraid to move on and don't allow a pastor to manipulate you to stay in the abuse. And that is, you know, is so true and can be so tricky. It kind of goes back to what someone was saying earlier. Like you might not even know what's happening. You know, you sure you heard from God? let's pray about it, <laughs> you know, so even that can be tricky, and so that leads to my, my final question is, what would you all say, as church leaders or two church leaders, what can be done to help prevent them from being controlling, or if it is that accidental controlling, like, what would you all say to them to, to, to help them um, present in this way a little less? or not at all? Um, I know I, for one, would say definitely remain humble, um, remain submitted to leadership. As a leader, you should still be submitted to leadership. Um, you know, stay in your, definitely stay in your word because they're going, I mean, we, we all get, have those hills and valleys where we just fall off and how often we read in the word this past year has been traumatic for a lot of people in a lot of ways pastors are not exempt from that leadership in church is not exempt from that so um definitely encourage your congregation to pray for you encourage your congregation and your your friend group to lift you up in prayer if you are a leader um Mm -hmm. because you need it uh you are you are in a position to where the enemy is going to be busy with you and they are going, the enemy is going to be busy with your congregation and the people that you are right. um, the leadership over. So you definitely need to have uh, people praying on your behalf as well as you praying for yourself. So I would definitely say remain in prayer, stay on your face, uh, remain in, have, make sure you make time for it outside of church so mm-hmm. if the only thing the only time that you are getting in your your church time or your bible time is when you are preparing for a a, a pastor's event or preparing to, to speak a word to other people then that is not enough you need mm-hmm. to be getting to your word for just for the edification of yourself and to um uplift yourself mm-hmm. so that's what i was saying <laughs> yeah i love it Derek. oh it's hard to follow after that one. She hit all the <laughs> who knows. <laughs> I'm be like, look, I'm gonna do like Derek said. The Lord right. said. It. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Sierra? <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, I think I think to kind of kind of add a little to that, um, we have to be able to hold those in accountable. Mm-hmm. Um, we have to. One thing I, I was uh, looking at, I have a, a favorite pastor. I always watch him preach. I, um, his name is John Jenkins. Mm. Um, he he's the man to me, <laughs> and um, he was talking about the the order of his church, and um, even though he's the head pastor of a gigantic twelve thousand member church. Mm-hmm. Um, the deacon board can fire him. Mm. 
you know, he he he's the head, he's the senior pastor, but um, and his pastor is TD Jakes. Mm-hmm. So he has many people that he still has to answer to mm-hmm. as the head of the church. Mm-hmm. And that that is important. Like when I started my church, I wouldn't start it until I talked to a pastor that I, I asked. First, I asked, I feel like God wanted me to start this. Um, do I have your backing? Will you will you be my pastor as I pastor them? Mm-hmm. I, I, I wouldn't start it in, until that. If, if And I would say to anybody who is looking to start a church or anything like that, if you don't have someone over you, wait. Because that is not the order of God. Mm-hmm everybody needs somebody over them everybody needs to submit to someone Mm -hmm. it Mm -hmm. keeps you humble yeah it keeps you focused and not going off on your own little thing and you you have to do that because sometimes you might have an idea that that your pastor can kind of nip in the bud because you might be about to hurt somebody Mm mm-hmm and you never saw it, mm-hmm. but the man over you mm-hmm. did see. Yeah. So yeah. I would just add that, and just just to say, um, stay submitted, stay submitted, stay in prayer, and stay in your word. Mm-hmm. I think out of all of this, my biggest point is stay in your word. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That word never gets old. As you all think about. Any final comments or thoughts you might have? Um, a couple of people on Facebook had mentioned, um, Erica said, that's a genius question. It's almost like a spiritual gaslight when the pastor's like, did, did you pray? Did you hear? Are you sure? Um, some Somebody said some pastors don't think, well, some people don't think you can correct a pastor. And I've definitely heard that before. Um, the important, importance of accountability and all of those things. So yeah, I, I think it is, we're wrapping up, that would be my takeaway too, is to remember that even though you might have a title or even if you don't, if you're called to be in some type of leadership position, you are still human. You are still fallible. You still make mistakes. We are not God. So you don't know everything and wise counsel needs wise counsel. Like what Derek was saying, like you still... Mm-hmm no matter how high up you make it, you still need to be submitted to someone for sure. All right, Sierra, final thoughts. And then Derek, I'll let you give your final thoughts. Okay. Um, I guess final thoughts, would, I, w- I would definitely say in, in all things, seek, seek God first. Mm-hmm. Um, whether you are a person in leadership, if you are a person that is not in leadership, in the traditional sense, you are still a leader. People are looking to you. Um, if you are a Christian, period, then you can consider or you should consider yourself a leader because others outside of the faith and, and, and a lot of times within the faith are looking to you for some type of leadership or guidance or even just watching your walk. So mm-hmm. be mindful um, and, and always see Christ. Amen. Derek? I would say remember that your leadership, as you said, are human. So always focus, number one, on God. Mm-hmm. Number one on God, because God will never let you down. He'll never disappoint you. He'll never, never forsake you. He will never turn away from you. All these things that men can do, all these things maybe that men have done, that that hurt and as humans ourselves we we get hurt love is opening yourself to be vulnerable so there's a good chance one day you're gonna be hurt but we can't put that answer to that to that void that we have to that pain that we have we can't put that in a human we can't put that in a leader we can't Mm -hmm even in counseling or anything, we can't put it in them. We have to give it to God. We have to, because God is the only one that can take our pain away. He's the only one that can can 
really give you the strength to get over church hurt, bad leadership, and to grow and learn from it. Mm -hmm. So Amen. give it to God. Amen. Give it to God. I also want to give you all um, an opportunity if you want to share like your social media handles, websites, just any exciting things um, that you are doing. So Derek, I'm going to come back to you. Any, <laughs> I know you're chefing and doing all the kind of stuff here. Any I don't know, do you do any speaking engagements or anything like that that we need to be mindful of? <laughs> um, I do some, but it, it's right now kind of taking a break. I'm, I'm kind of focusing on getting the chef thing and the AFLAC thing going. Okay. Um, um, so, and AFLAC, you need AFLAC, holler at me. <laughs> right, you need insurance. Right. Coverage by that duck. <laughs> yep, clack, clack. <laughs> thank you Derek Sierra want to shout out about Cake and Conversations um, again I do podcasts called Cake and Conversations you can find it on all of your podcast outlets um, and if you want to follow me you can follow me on Instagram same name Sierra Narita um, I think that's about it <laughs> okay awesome I thank you guys so much um, for joining in and just participating in this discussion. It was like so good, even as like, I know y'all and I was like, oh yeah, all right. You know, so. <laughs> thank you for having us. So great, thank you so much. And thank you to all the Facebook folks who watched and interacted and, and said um, so many like asked questions and had comments. And I think my friend Mo, her statement is so key. And I think we're gonna close on this. She says, Pastors don't own members. They are stewards of God's people. Amen. I think that just seals it up wonderfully. So I am going to say thank you to the folks on Facebook. We're going to say bye to you guys. Panelists, stay on even when I um, close out on live. So thank you, Facebook. Thank you for joining again. Oh, hopefully I can end it because I don't really remember where I'm supposed to talk. <laughs> <laughs>